APC has held the grand finale of its presidential campaign at the Teslim Balogo Stadium, Lagos. The campaign, which was well attended by mammoth crowd in Lagos, saw President Muhammad Buhari campaign for the candidate of the party, Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu. and is a committed Nigerian. Congratulations. Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinobu appreciated President Buhari for his support and for building in Nigeria that the people will be proud of. He is the president. You can have only one at a time. I have loud and clear and I can measure the level of confidence you have in me at a distant country thank you in a distant country Mr. President to them of my characteristics and his faith and my capacity to do a good job as a president of Federal Republic of Nigeria. The APC flag bearer promised to pursue vigorously all the agenda in the renewed hope manifesto if voted into office as the president of Nigeria. But I assure you, as you work hard for me, I will work hard for Nigeria. Oh! Thank you, thank you. As you give Nigeria the hope to renew their faith in their country. I will sustain that hope. I will bring it to you. Those who look helpless today will be helpful in this country. All the agenda set in our program, Renewed Hope Manifesto, we be pursued diligently, vigorously, with all our energy. President Ahmed Lawan, Speaker of House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Miller, Governors of Lagos, Ogun Plateau, and former Governors graced the event. In still talking politics, Augusta Gava, Prince Tapo Apiodo, has reassured that his administration would not compromise the status of Abeokuta as the state capital, noting that the city would get deserved social amenities. Governor Abiodo gave the promise during his visit to the palace of Alake and Paramotrola of Ebaland, Oba Adidotsun Aremu Badebo. Governor's Office correspondent Yusuf Ganyo reports. <laughs> Governor Dakbo Apiodu arrived the palace of Alake and Paramount Rule of Egberland or Badido to Aremu Badibo to get his blessings for his re-election bid. Obagbade will assure the government that the Oba people are ready to return in for a second time in office. <laughs> Former Governor Aremo Lushogun Shoba 
emphasized the need for all of the indigenous to vote for Ashwa Dibola Metinobu and Governor Dabo Abiodun in the election. <laughs> Party stalwart and supporters of Governor Abiodun in the local government later welcomed him to a campaign rally amidst jubilations. <laughs> While addressing the gathering, the governor said his administration remains focused and steady with paramount interest in the socio-economic well-being of residents of the state. Yusuf Gani, OGTV News. Still on the re-election campaign of Governor Dapo Abiodo, the people of Abokota South local government area have shown appreciation to the government for restoring functional pipe bond water to Fajol Bonogo axis of the council area. A cross section of the people who spoke with Ferrara at this who gave the commendation while hosting the campaign team of Prince Dapo Abiodo to the local government area. The people also showed appreciation for the construction of Bonogo Fajol Alogi Bypass, which has opened the area for development. For Wura Atisongo has the details. Harvest of dividends of democracy in Abekuta South local government area of Ogun State. At least me seeing this road, sad after several years that it has been untied and development here has been so low. For now that the road is started, I think I should reciprocate as well as a good citizen of the country that I should go out to vote. Long forgotten area in terms of developmental projects are now proud of infrastructure like roads and water supply by the government of Ogun State. What is this government has government given us dividends of democracy. After about 17 years, we now have functional public water supply. We are doing a very good work, very good job. We invited so many enlightened people to this place. The road, which is now serving as a bypass to the ever-busy Obanto Kuiliwiron Oshiele Badon Road, is serving two local government areas Odeda and Abelkuta South, local government areas of Ogun State. This um, Bonegun Road has been opened up. The, there's further development will go on, further layout will come up, so that further things will uh, take place, further manpower development. Commissioning the road, Governor Dakwa Biodun was accompanied by party stalwarts, including the state chairman of the APC, Chief Yemi Sanusi, former speaker, House of Representatives, Dimeji Bankole, Elsewhere, speakers of Ogun State House of Assembly, Honorable Titi Osini and Honorable Tuji Egbetokun, and other chieftains of the party in the local government area. Everywhere we go is defined by the commissioning of the people oriented to it. It is the movement of our policies in the course of our campaign, and after we assume the office. The governor at the commissioning ceremony said roads constructed across Ogun State by his administration were close to 400 kilometers. According to him, in the course of the campaign, hospitals, schools, and other facilities aimed at improving the living standard of the people were commissioned. He called on the people to vote for the presidential candidates of Beneficiaries from the five local government areas of the district, Ayoteji Olumi, was at the event held at the pavilion ground in Laro, Ogun State. His report. The All Progressives Congress senatorial candidate for Ogun West, Senator Solomon Olamile Kwadiola, popularly called Yayi, 
has empowered over 4,000 youth, artisans, and people living with disabilities drawn out from the five local governments of the senatorial district. Royal fathers, political leaders, government officials, market leaders said the initiative was a landmark achievement in the history of Ogun West Senatorial District. All that has not represented us and he has been doing this. So what if he does represent us? Politics start from grassroots. The disabled are beggars. So when somebody has something to eat, somebody, something that can fetch him any honey, will he go to the streets beggar to beg again? No. Well, no big deal for any real fathers to endorse a good candidate from their senatorial districts, which we have also done right here in Ogun uh, West. I believe that uh, when he is finally elected to be our own uh, senator, I'm quite sure that uh, he's going to do more. Senator Solomon Olamileko Adiola, in his address, promised adequate, fair, and solid representation of the district at the national level if given the opportunity to serve as a canvassed vote for other APC candidates. We have people who are physically challenged and also members of our great party and also members of our community. So I have decided to carry them along in this We are getting somewhere. It is not about giving more fish, but training and showing you how to get this fish. The senator, again, was endorsed by the royal fathers. Transformers, tricycles, grinding machines, laptops, freezers, air dryers, sewing machines, amongst others, were distributed to beneficiaries, courtesy of the APC senatorial candidate of Ogun West, Senator Solomon Olamile Adiola. Ajodeji Olumi, OGTV News. The Ogun State Elders Consultative Forum has enjoined all stakeholders in the 2023 general elections to ensure that peace prevails before, during and after the elections. The statement by the chairman of Ogun State Elders Consultative Forum, Otumba Samuel Jayola Ipikunle, said it behoves the political parties to educate their supporters in the elections not to give room for violence in any form. The Elders Forum urged all contestants not to see the election as a do or die affair, admonishing the winners to be magnanimous in victory and losers to demonstrate the spirit of sportsmanship once the results are announced. To the umpire of the elections, this Ogun State Elders Consultative Forum pleads for unalloyed commitment to transparency and credible elections by ensuring that the new Electoral Act is implemented to the letter, urging the law enforcement agencies to perform their duties with every sense of responsibility. The forum added that the judiciary should not only be firm and fair to all, but should openly demonstrate total commitment to the rule of law in the dispensation of justice. And still to come in the news, ahead of the forthcoming general elections, UK advises Nigerians to ensure that of the forthcoming elections, the United Kingdom has advised critical stakeholders and political parties to ensure a violence-free poll. The UK's Minister for State for Development and Africa, Andrew Mitchell, gave this advice in a statement to Nigerians on Tuesday. Mitchell noted that the UK and its government remained committed to supporting credible and inclusive elections which are fundamental to Nigeria's continued democratic growth and to the future of regional and global democracy. He however urged party officials to respect electoral laws and institutions and avoid hate speech. He assured that the UK is following the run-up to these presidential, national assembly and gubernatorial elections very closely. 
Meanwhile, a total of 146,913 domestic and international observers will be deployed for the 2023 general elections. This was made known by the chairman, Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, at the INEC briefing for observers of the 2023 general elections in Abuja on Tuesday. According to the INEC chairman, the number of observers is the latest, is largest in the history of the country. The commission accredited 196 national and domestic organizations that deployed 144,800 observers and 33 international organizations that deployed 2,113 observers. Yakubu also noted that the observations and recommendations from election observers over the years have helped to improve the country's electoral process. He stated that the progressive improvement in the electoral democracy since 1999 draws in part from the reports of observers and the study tours. A total of 146, sorry, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps has said it's deploy, it will deploy 102,000 officers as part of its commitment towards ensuring a huge free election. The spokesperson for the Corps, Ulushola Odomoso, disclosed this to reporters. Odomoso said that the safety of voters very in and after the election was a top priority, adding that the elections will be violence-free. Odomoso added that operatives of the Corps that participated in the 2022 Osho and Ikiti elections have been paid their outstanding allowances. The Court of Appeal sitting in Adokiti, Ikiti State, has affirmed Biotu Ojibanji as the winner of the governorship election held on June 18, 2022, in the state. Delivering the judgment on Tuesday, a three member panel of the court threw out the appeal filed by the candidate of the Social Democratic Party, Shagun Uni, for lacking merit, according to a report by the cable. The August State Governorship, National and State Houses of Assembly Election Petition Tribunal sitting in Nabe Kuta has been constituted by the President of Court of Appeal, Abuja, Honorable Justice Monica Bonan Dungba Mensen. In a statement by the Secretary of the Election Petition Tribunal, Abdul Salam Jodi, the constitution of the tribunal ahead of the 2023 general elections is in line with Section 285, Subsection 2 and 3 of the Constitution of Nigeria 1999 as amended, as well as Paragraph 133, Subsection 3 of the Electoral Act 2010 as amended. The registry of the tribunal is open and the line of the tribunal is the magistrate court Ishabo Abeokuta. Away from politics, the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology in Ogun State announces that all private and public primary and secondary schools, as well as government science and technical colleges in the state, are to proceed on second midterm holiday for 2022. 2023 academic session from Thursday 23rd to Friday 24th February 2023. In a statement by the Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology, Professor Abayomi Arigabu, open day will be observed by both public and private primary and secondary schools on Wednesday 22nd February 2023. Schools are expected to resume for academic activities on Monday 27th February 2023. Parent and guardians are enjoined to take proper care of the words during the holiday. Culture is a way of life of the people which must be preserved and transmitted from one generation to another, hence the importance of cultural day observed by students of public and private schools in Abeokuta, where different aspects of cultures were highlighted. Bolaji Samson completes the report. Cultural Day is a special day set aside to celebrate our rich and diverse culture. A cultural day is usually celebrated among the pupils of different schools as part of their termly and yearly event. Cultural Day aimed at celebrating the values, culture and tradition of different races, especially amongst the young ones. A culture unites people and integrates them. These are some of the benefits derived at the Cultural Day. 
It brings people together, especially the children, our, our growing up children, that, don't know, that really don't know about culture. So it brings them together, there is an avenue to tell them this is how we do it, this is what our forefather has been doing. Yes, they shouldn't forget our culture, because our culture is our identity, wherever we go, we'll be identified by that. That okay, this person is from Nigeria, this person is from Kenya, this person is from South Africa, and what have you. Culturalists stressed the importance of transmitting culture and values of different traditions to the young ones at an early stage. Today, which is the cultural day, is a very, very unique day. As you can see, the students, the pupils, and other people with their attires, like me now, you can see my own fila and my dress. So today is very, very, very much you can and culture is still very important. To the populars, the cultural day is an avenue to learn about different cultures. It is a very vital thing that we must celebrate in Nigeria particularly because Nigeria on its own it's it comprises of many tribes and uh, cultures. There is a lot of uh, diversity in cultures. But if we are not doing this type of thing, the culture of Yoruba, Awusa and everything, people will not even know the beauty, the beauties in their culture. The thrilled their audience by showcasing the various aspects of the different traditions we have. A very interesting game. My tribe is a very nice tribe and I love it. Nigerians and the world have been reminded that the nation has rich cultural and traditional heritage as it was necessary for children to have a deep knowledge of our culture and tradition. It is a way to keep them abreast of our rich culture, about the diversity, ethnicity, everything that surrounds culture. Bolaji Samson, OGTV News. Thank you, Bolaji, for that report. Following the broadcast of President Muhammadu Buhari that the old 1,000 Naira and 500 Naira notes should cease to be legal tender despite the Supreme Court's ruling, so many Nigerians are still going through a hard process to make a living. Margaret Okunlala went around Abekuta Metropolis to sample people's opinion on how they have been coping with the latest new normal, the cashless policy report. The recent change in the Nigerian economic narrative is no longer news. From the massive turnout of depositing the old Naira notes to the low circulation and scarcity of the new Naira notes, each Nigerian has a story to tell, as they claim to have had their fair share of the deal, following the order by President Muhammad Buhari that the old Naira note ceases to be the legal tender, despite Supreme Court's ruling. Nigerians are now being forced to transact business through online transfer, which seems not reliable. For those that still accept the old Naira notes, they said the exchange rate is on the high side. I still have some old notes with me. I want to change it. They said if I want to change 10,000 Naira, I'll give them 10,000 Naira. I'll collect new notes, 5,000 Naira. Nigerians who take advantage of the point of sale, POS, complained that the rate of charges is high and most times not affordable than the normal rate. Within the space of three weeks, but now we drain 1,000 Naira for 250 Naira and 300 Naira. Somebody said he's ready to give me 100,000. That I, if I can pay 10,000, definitely if I want to, if I go for that kind of money, if I want to give it out to people, I must make, make double of that money. The rejection of old Naira notes and scarcity of the new ones were ranted bank transfer policy now embraced by all and sundry. Nigerians said they have subscribed to using the bank transfer system for their payments no matter the amount involved. Transporters and traders are not exempted as they said the transfer system of payment is their last resort to access goods and services. I've been transferring to traders. The bike man that came to pick me in the morning, I transferred 200 naira to him. If I fail to collect transfer, that means I will not sell. They accept 1,002 for transfer. They requested top extra 300, that is 1,500. We were ordered by our leaders to take transfer for passengers. And by transfer? I take transfer from customers. While some embraced the system, some said it is not reliable 
because of unstable network. The effectiveness of the transfer is something you can even vouch for. You are even sometimes debited. It takes days before you know the recipient gets the money. Nigerians said the long-term goals of the cashless policy is a positive one. Though its implementation has brought untold hardship to the general populace, but according to them, the adaptive nature of Nigerians will afford them the opportunity to pull through. For them to ask us to hold on to the old note, they know what they're doing. I like my country because everything that first will be complaining, before you know it, we adapt to it. We are gradually adapting to the, the new system. The father urged Nigerians to be patient and not take the violence. Rather, head to the polls to vote wisely. Margaret. Okunola, OJTV News. Auguste Gardner, Prince Dagbo Abiodo, has appealed to the people of Shagamo in Shagamo local government area to go about the Nama businesses and everything will be done to bring everyone responsible for the violent protest resulting in wanton destruction of private and public properties to bark. The governor said this after his inspection of the area affected by the violent acts in the community. Matthew Shogumi completes the report. A bubbling and economically buzzing city of Shagamu, still recovering from the pains of escalated protests against Naya Swap and Cash Crunch as normalcy gradually returns to the town. It started as a protest against the scarcity of Naira notes. It turned violence and spread like a wildfire, thereby engulfing the whole community as the IRS youths moved around the community, destroying and vandalizing bank facilities on size, including the automated teller machines and vehicles, among other items. Two of the affected banks were completely raised down before moving to a Badon Electricity Division office in the area and Shagamu local government secretariat vandalizing and looting the facilities. With this wanton destruction of properties, government institutions, Babratunde Ajayi expressed his great concern on the situation, stating that he had taken steps to avoid this through different approaches. Because what I did was to send a message to everyone. I said, look, in line with what the governor, our governor said, in line with what the Supreme Court also said, please continue to accept this old note. And at the end of the day, we give ourselves four weeks. If at the end of the four weeks you are stuck with the old note, you can don't know. I said, bring it to the palace. I am giving them indemnity that everyone with that old note will have them change. If they can't change them, I will sort it out. And I said that, you know. But it's a pity that sometimes people don't know that when they plan, because to me, this thing looks um, orchestrated. A member of the House of Representatives representing the constituency, Honorable Adeo Mianonuda, said the wanton destruction of government and private properties was unnecessary. A lot of the mob were just waiting for any excuse, joined in. Um, and we now later realized that it was even instigated politically. Um, and it's just not necessary. Uh, I mean, we've been going around trying to see how we can ameliorate the situation. The call for calm as the nation prepares for the forthcoming general elections. Matthew, show me OGTV News. More revelations are emerging on the woman popularly known as Mama Dada by a neighbor who set a silver blaze due to a debt he owed some financial institutions. Bumi Adegun was at the home of the deceased at Okekesi Itoko area of Abiyokuta to find out more about what transpired and how 70,000 Naira debt could lead to suicide. His report. Yet to come out of the agony of the mother of a whole family some time ago in Abiyokuta this one is another sad moment. This woman, simply known as Mama Dada, got frustrated by a 70,000 Naira debt and could not find a way out, then decided to take her life. She set herself ablaze and to end being run after for the 70,000 Naira debt. The pathetic story of a woman along Itoko in Abelkuta 
who committed suicide by setting herself ablaze. This is the building, a rented apartment, six rooms, six rooms, here at Itoko, area of Abelkuta. She was narrating the story of her death to a neighbor who appealed to her that everything would be fine. That means she has sent her son to buy five liter petrol. A visit to KKC in Itokoe of Abelkuta saw people still gathered in groups discussing an incident that happened over the weekend still wondering what could have made Mama Dada end her life this way. The boy, after handing over the petrol to her mother, asked what she wanted to do with it, but she lied to him. She even asked that he should lock the main door to prevent those she owed not to know she was around after sending him on an errand. The house burned beyond repairs. Although the corpse of the woman has been taken out of the house, some of her properties caught by fire were still seen. People living in the neighborhood wondered why she did not ask for help. The boy had not taken many steps away from the building when they heard a loud explosion and they noticed the house was on fire. Although the woman also tried to escape after discovering it was not easy, but she had blocked the door at both end. Those who heard of the news, although prayed for the repose of the soul of the woman, said suicide was not the best option but the question remains who could have helped her especially during the present economic hardship facing the nation although many didn't kill themselves because of loan collected from financial institutions but ill health resulting in hypertension and other serious related health challenges have led to untimely deaths. Our situation is unfortunate. 70,000 is not a lot of money. Even if it was 700,000, even if it was 70 million, God is still in the business of doing miracles. We've seen people who were never related to anybody, who just went out of their way, out of the goodness of their hearts, out of their magnanimity, were just of help to somebody. What if Lapo on that day too had, by some means, just decided to accommodate her, knowing the situation in which the country is currently uh, in? Uh, it's sad, and uh, I don't, for anyone who is contemplating such an action, I would just suggest that uh, they have really think it is not the way out. The remains of the cops, according to the neighbors, have been buried, and the children moved out of the house to an unknown destination. Bumi Adigun. OGTV News. The death toll recorded from impacts they say in Nigeria has risen to eight, resulting from 789 confirmed cases, according to the World Health Organization. According to WHO, situation reports Nigeria now has the highest number of impacts cases and death in the African continent. It also revealed that a total of 85,860 confirmed cases and 93 deaths have been recorded from 110 countries in all six WHO regions as of February 16. The International Health Regulations Emergency Committee on the Multi-Country Impacts Outbreak was organized for the fourth time on February 9. The WHO Director General, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, agreed with the advice of the committee that the event continues to establish a public health emergency of international concern. The Emergency Committee acknowledged the progress made globally and raised concerns over ongoing transmission in some countries as well as possible inadequate detection and under-reporting in others, especially where there was animal to human transmission before. The Impacts African Region report revealed that the Republic recorded three cases, Cameroon has 18 cases and three deaths. The Central African Republic reported 22 cases, Congo 5, the Democratic Republic of Congo 270, Ghana 121, and 4 deaths. 
Liberia 7, Mozambique 1, and 1 death, and South Africa 5. Up next is Business News with Dominica Beha. Don't go away. Welcome to the business segment of the news. The Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAC, says it shared 750.17 billion naira among the three tiers of government in January 2023. The figure represents a decrease of 240 billion naira compared to the 990 billion naira shared in December 2022. FAC disclosed this in a communique issued at the end of its latest meeting in Abuja on Monday. The total amount includes gross statutory revenue, value-added tax, electronic money transfer levies, augmentation from non-mineral revenue, and an additional sum of 15 billion naira from savings. The federal government received 277 billion naira. The states received 244 billion naira. The local government councils got 180 billion naira, while the mineral producing states received 32 billion naira as derivation, that is 13% of mineral revenue. The Central Bank of Nigeria has debunked a purported press release shared on the Instagram page of the First Lady Aisha Buhari. In the release shared on Tuesday, it was alleged that the old 500 naira and 1000 naira notes should remain legal tenders for the next 70 days till May 1, 2023. The bank in the news, the CBN, said it is sticking to the president's broadcast of February 16, 2023, where the CBN was directed to only reissue and recirculate the old 200 naira banknotes, and this is expected to circulate as legal tender for 60 days up to April 10, 2023. The nation's financial institution therefore called on the public to disregard any message or information not formally released by the Central Bank of Nigeria on this subject. The country's external reserves fell by $427.14 million in one month, figures obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria revealed on Monday. This is as the crisis in the country's currency worsened over the scarcity of the new Naira notes. Figures obtained from the CBN on the movement of foreign reserves showed that the reserves, which stood at $337.21 billion as of January 18, fell to $36.79 billion as of the end of February 16, 2023. Last year, the CBN governor, Godwin Emifili, after announcing the plan to redesign the Naira notes, said one of the objectives of the policy was to mop up currency outside the bank vaults. He urged Nigerians to make use of alternative payment channels that would drive the digital payment systems in the country. And finally, on the business segment of the news, the Debt Management Office says the federal government savings bond has received a total subscription of 45.135 billion naira between 2017 and 2022. The Director General of the DMO, Patient Sumia, disclosed these in Lagos on Tuesday. She said that the savings bond was specifically designed to encourage retail investors who had done well across the six geopolitical zones of the country going by the numbers. According to her, it is a product that the DMO introduced in March 2017 to enable retail investors participate in the federal government security market and promote financial inclusion. She said that a stakeholders meeting was arranged to review the performance of the FGN savings bond and to present the portal. O'Neill said that the DMO worked with the Central Securities Clearing System to develop the portal. And that's the business segment of the news. Many thanks for watching. It's back to Bukola for the rest of the bulletin.